Hey, you found us. Welcome, everybody. This is Scripture Gems. Hello, everyone. My name is John Fulmer, and this is my brother, Jay. Uh, what are we doing here, John? This isn't our normal show. No, I'm afraid it's not. No, and it's a lot shorter. But we wanted to just take a moment to let you know that we're going to take a little break from our weekly release schedule to spend some time with family for General Conference and Easter. We'll have our next episode ready for you on Easter Sunday, and we'll be covering Messiah chapters 1 to 3. We also wanted to take a quick moment to thank all of you who have been watching and listening to the show. We really appreciate your support and encouragement. We read all of your comments, even though we may not always reply to them. While it's true that Jay and I just can't get enough of the scriptures, it's really helpful to hear your feedback and suggestions, and so keep it coming. It yeah, really we love it. it. We do. It help, helps keep us going, so thank you. We know there's a Come Follow Me lesson for Easter, but after discussing it, we decided that we're going to cover all these scriptures and material later in the year. So we decided that we just have a short episode today. But Jay uh, had a really interesting thought that he wanted to share that might help the Easter celebration as, as well as our, our preparation for General Conference. You know, when you think of Easter, you usually think of Hagar, Abraham's second wife. Oh, wait, I, no. Nobody. Do, is that the... <laughs> nobody does. Wait, wait. Nobody thinks of Hagar. No, that's... Oh, okay. Okay, but here's... here. Let me offer this. I've got a couple examples, and, and I wanted to share this because it's been on my mind lately. We live in such a divisive time, and in Genesis chapter 16, here we have Hagar, who's... The narrator uses her name, but nobody in the story uses her name. Abraham doesn't call her Hagar. Sarai doesn't call her Hagar. She's called the maid. She's called the Egyptian. So she's identified by her nationality. She's identified by her social status. But look what happens in verse 8 when an angel of God appears to Hagar. The very first thing he does is call her by her name. And he's the only one in the story who does that. He appears again in chapter 21. And uh, when speaking to her, he calls her by name. And I, the thing I loved so much about that is that, yeah, there's all sorts of different ways we can slice one another, our identities. But to God, there's only one that's important. And maybe that should be for us too. And that's as children of God. And he knows us by name. Think about, as we're talking about Easter, think about Mary Magdalene at the tomb. There she is. Jesus appears to her as a resurrected being. She doesn't recognize him until and only when he calls her by her name. It reminds me of John chapter 10, verse 3, where it says that his sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name. He knows. And it's fascinating to look through the scriptures of all the different times that an angel the Lord, Jesus Christ, calls people by name. But there's one very special moment of someone being called by name, and that's in the Joseph Smith First Vision account. This is the only place I can find in Scripture. When the Father appears, he announces his Son. But in this case, the only recorded case of which I can find, the Father calls the person he's testifying to by name. The father calls him Joseph. The father does, the son does, the servants of the Lord do. They know us by name. They love us and want us to, well, as President Nelson says, they want us to hear him. On February 26th, we had a special invitation from our prophet, seer and revelator and president of the church. When President Nelson reminds us to pay attention to that charge from the Father, to hear his Son. This paragraph here, our Father loves us and yearns for each one of us, by name, I would insert, to choose to return to his holy presence. That's, again, a use of agency. He doesn't want us to be gathered in you know, by force or pressured in. He wants us to choose to return 
to his presence. He pleads with us to listen because it's through Christ that will happen. And then he offers these invitations. And these were the things that stood out to me, and I thought I would just share them with you. I invite you, says our prophet, to think deeply and often about this key question. How do you hear him? Think of Hagar. Think of Mary Magdalene. Think of Joseph. People that the Lord reached out to who willingly heard him, all in different ways. How do you hear him? I also invite you to take steps to hear him better and more often. And that's what he encourages us to focus in a special way on that historic event on the Sacred Grove. And I reread that in preparation for conference. And that's when that really stood out to me, that it's the Father who calls Joseph by name. I invite you, he says, to be proactive and to look for opportunities to share your feelings about the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there's a blessing. I bless you in your efforts to get on and stay on his covenant path and strive with all your heart, might, mind, and soul to hear him. What a great season of the year to be thinking of that message. Hmm. It's an amazing time, and it's a powerful message from President Nelson. It goes along well, though, with something that we may have forgotten uh, back in October of uh, last year. The closing remarks from President Nelson for uh, General Conference reminded us that we have a significant General Conference coming up, and that while we don't know the exact date of Joseph Smith's first vision, we do know that it was in the spring of 1820. And so this is 200 years now marking from the the first vision. And uh, as President Nelson mentioned, this is a bicentennial year for General Conference of that first vision. And we thought we'd wrap up this episode by uh, reminding all of us of the words given to us by President Nelson at the end of last October's General Conference. And may we all take these challenges to heart as we prepare for this memorable General Conference next week. Now I would like to turn to another topic plans for the coming year. In the springtime of the year 2020, it will be exactly 200 years since Joseph Smith experienced the theophany that we know as the first vision. God the Father and his beloved Son, Jesus Christ, appeared to Joseph, a 14-year-old youth. That event marked the onset of the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ in its fullness precisely as foretold in the Holy Bible. Thus, the year 2020 will be designated as a bicentennial year. General Conference next April will be different from any previous conference. In the next six months, I hope that every member and every family will prepare for a unique conference that will commemorate the very foundations of the restored gospel. You may wish to begin your preparation by reading afresh Joseph Smith's account of the first vision as recorded in the Pearl of Great Price. Our course of study for the next year in Come, Follow Me is the Book of Mormon. You may wish to ponder important questions such as, how would my life be different if my knowledge gained from the Book of Mormon were suddenly taken away? Or, How have the events that followed the first vision made a difference for me and my loved ones? Also, with the Book of Mormon videos now becoming available, you may wish to incorporate them in your individual and family study. Select your own questions, design your own plan, immerse yourself in the glorious light of the Restoration. As you do, General Conference next April will not only be memorable, it will be unforgettable.